today what we're going to do is we're going to put this motor in. Um, it's been about a week since I've been out here, so I got sick again. Yay! Um, 712s at Honda pretty much just killed me, and then I got sick, and uh, yeah, we're back. That's all I'm going to say. So let's get this motor up and into place. Um, this is where having the right equipment actually really comes in handy. This little scissor table right here makes this job a hundred times easier than what it needs to be. So if you're going to be doing something a lot, maybe you look into some specialty equipment. It does help. It really does. So we'll take the table up about as high as it can go. And then we'll bring the hoist down the rest of the way. So that is as high as that table goes. Now remember, the first thing that we have to do is we have to put that steering knuckle back in before we do up any of the subframe bolts. So we're going to bring the hoist down and try to line up that uh, steering knuckle. Now with the steering rack knuckle put in, we can start putting in some of the subframe bolts. So we just have to lower it a bit more and then start attaching these subframe bolts. time that motor and transmission subframe has ever been in, well the subframe has been in before, but it's the first time there's been a four cylinder in this V6 car. The hydraulics are moving so slow. Uh, I just heard over the radio that it's actually negative 28 outside today. Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. I think at negative 32 Celsius it's negative 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but I'm not an expert, but it's nice to, it's definitely nice to have that motor back in there. Now, as I was just tightening up the last bolt, I remembered that I didn't finish the rear brakes on this. So I cut them, but I didn't put the plugs in. So I just have like two open brake lines to the back. But as of right now, that's fine because I got two open brake lines to the front. So let's get her down and... Uh, Take a look at my amazing four cylinder work. Just, just excuse me for a second, I'm gonna admire this. It's a low rider. Oh, let's take a look. Just as I was expecting, it fits. <laughs> I know that doesn't really sound like a big shock, but I was actually having a little bit of uh, worries if the if this would fit or not. But honestly, this thing looks perfectly at place inside here. Um, I lent my standalone harness for this motor to a buddy, and I haven't got it back yet. So I don't know if we'll hear it run today, but I do know that it runs. We're going to try to reach our hands around and fix that rear brake line that I forgot about before I put this motor in there. And then we can hook up our power steering, all that fun stuff. Oh, oh no, I 
I should have done a, I'll have to disconnect all that and do that. Um, we can shove the electrical through the hole in the firewall. We can put the right generation of computer or, you know what, I, I don't think I'm going to shove that electrical through that firewall yet because I haven't stripped any of the interior yet. Um, this car does need axles, but I don't even know if I have spare axles for this car. I'll have to take a look around at that. We can put our struts back in, but I do need to put an axle on the passenger side, so I'm not really 100% sure about that as of right yet. Um, we can plug up those brake lines. Uh, we can run our power source for our starter. Uh, I'd really like to get this motor running on just right here. Nothing else, just what's inside the engine bay here. But because I let out a harness and I don't have it back, thank you, Jesse. I uh, cannot get this thing running right yet. But it will come back. I know it will come back eventually. Hopefully today. Round two. When it comes to the brakes on this car, I kind of had a little bit of a problem on the passenger side. I tried putting the V6 caliper onto the four cylinder stuff, and it may have worked if this was a older style car, but the caliper didn't fit. So then I tried switching the brackets out, so I switched out the brackets, then I switched out the calipers, and then nothing really went together very nicely. The new caliper is not as wide as the old one. so. It's actually pretty weird, these older style, because this is a newer style car, but I put the older style brakes into it because I'm using the older motor. The older brakes are bigger than the V6 newer calipers, and the brake pads are bigger and everything, so not really sure why Toyota did that. But what I ended up doing was just taking the brake lines off, and unfortunately I did get rid of the steel, the, uh, the braided steel brake lines, but that's okay. We'll. We'll work around that. I can use regular brake lines. I don't need to be fancy. But what we're going to do is we're going to put some tires on this and we're going to come down. We've already got the tire on the driver's side. Just going to throw one here on passenger side and then we're going to uh, let her down and see how she looks. Now it still will not drive because I put a broken axle in passenger side because unfortunately as of right now I do not have an older passenger axle right now. Every passenger axle I have is either broken or newer style. I can take one out of another car, but I don't really, really want to take a car apart to build this car, so maybe I might do something. I don't know what will come across, but as of right now, I need a old school four-cylinder passenger axle.
Well, now that we have all the suspension back on it, even with the broken axle, we can see how she sits. That sits pretty good. I think those treks are blowing. But they sit nice and tall, and that's all that matters. Um, what's left to do, uh, unfortunately, had another fire. The engine harness did catch on fire, so I've had to splice right into the actual engine harness. Um, I did get the brakes done. I'm going to have to reroute my brake booster because remember I told you V6s and 4 cylinders is different, so I'm going to have to go outside and steal those parts. And um, yeah, basically the motor is done. I still have to do the upper motor mount, and then that's pretty much done. The main reason why we got off the hoist today is so that we can actually strip the interior because a lot of you guys may know I didn't do any stripping of this car yet. So this is going to be about it for today. And then tomorrow we're going to start stripping this thing. But this is completely backwards on how you're supposed to build a car. I did a motor swap and a standalone wiring harness and then I stripped the car. Usually you strip the car and then do everything else you want. But we're going to go backwards on this. But Take care and thanks for watching Zach's Workshop and we'll see you back here tomorrow.